Right. <coughs> Review for One Punch M Uh fuck. I was supposed to see Mob Psycho. <laughs> Okay. Hello YouTube, Satchi, how are you guys doing? So at the moment I'm up to episode 10 of Mob Psycho. You know, let's just get the big elephant right out of the room. There will be a lot of comparisons to One Punch Man. Not just because they're by the same author, one. Some of the comparisons are justified, some are simply assumed, but it's kinda inevitable. I mean, a lot of the hype behind this anime came simply because it's from the same guy. Which unfortunately flew over my head for a while. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But yeah, just putting that out there. But unlike One Punch Man, this anime actually decided to stick with the original art used by the author. One Punch Man decided to go for the cleaner, more streamlined art used by the manga re-release. But Mob Psycho actually just went with the original, really sketchy art that I would, I'll admit is not really for everyone, but I will also have to admit it really works for this anime. And thanks in no small part to the animation, I mean the animation is gorgeous. It has this whole surreal psychedelic quality, I mean, this is extremely showcasing just the opening itself, I mean just that man and a half, so much animation, so much color. It's amazing. And to be honest, the psychedelic quality kind of keeps reminding me of Madoka Magica whenever they go into a witch's barrier. That's what comes to mind. Mob Psycho is a really dynamic show and it is just so darn colorful. You would think they stick to one certain palette but not, they're not shy about it and it's just brilliant for that. Allow a moment to give props to the director, Yuzuru Tachikawa. I read a bit about him. He got his first break in an anime, anime Mirai, you might be familiar with, Death Billiard, then he went on to direct Death Parade, and you can see a lot of that direction coming in here, because it's just so beautifully put together. Nice job. Anyway, enough with the behind the scenes stuff, let's talk about this show. That main character, Shigeo Kageyama, also called Mom. He's a blank slate, just like Saitama was. But unlike in Saitama's case where he just became so bored he couldn't emote properly, CGO kind of feels he has to suppress his emotions because he is easily the most powerful creature in the world. But yet even he is wary of his own powers so he kind of has to suppress them, but suppressing them means suppressing his own emotions. It's kind of implied but not straight out stated that emotion is what fuels his psychic abilities. So it does make sense that as he tries to suppress his abilities, he suppresses his emotions as well. You'd suspect a character like that would be one note and extremely boring. But despite his lack of emotions, he does have some depth to him that comes across really well. Despite the show being about psychic powers, at its core it's really a coming of age tale that just happens to have a really powerful psychic as his main character. Mob is going through all the trials and tribulations kids go when they're going through adolescence. I mean, despite having all this power, he doesn't really think it's all that special. And really what he wants is to be normal, to fit in with everyone else, but his abilities just will not allow for that to happen. And not only that, his abilities, according to him, would really help him towards what he really wants. You know, to be popular, to be noticed by that one girl he likes, and yet he's really trying to come up with the best version of himself, which I think is why he just spontaneously joined the Body Improvement Club. He doesn't want his psychic abilities to be what defines him, but yet he's not really good at much else. He's not a very physical person, he doesn't do too well in school, but you know, one step, trying to improve upon himself to have an identity that could help him relate with others more. He admits himself, he didn't really do anything to earn these powers and yet it seemed to be his most defining factor. I mean, with very little effort, he suddenly became a savior figure for a religious cult and the most powerful delinquent in the borough. Yet he still has trouble with this cardio. Another interesting thing is how the people around Mob react to him. I mean, his mentor Reagan is an interesting case. Yet the minute we meet him, we don't like him, I don't like him. I mean, he's obviously exploiting Mob using his psychic powers to solve cases that he obviously can't himself. But after a couple episodes, she kind of kind of grows on you, and then you discover he's the one that actually instilled in Mob the humility that is keeping his powers in check. And as scummy as he might look, he does care about Mob. He shows some concern when he thought he was in trouble, and also he does look out for him, doesn't want other people exploiting him. 
like you. One of the more interesting cases was with Hanazawa Teruki, who was set up to be Mob's foil, but really is just showcasing what Mob would have been like if he was using his powers to do whatever he wanted, to kind of try to fulfill himself. Unlike Mob, who doesn't really feel he's all that special, Teru feels he's the main character of the universe. It kind of gives him this sense of entitlement. The conflict between them ended up being a whole conflict of ideal, but ultimately, there really wasn't any winner from that. The two of them actually bring out a very interesting contrast. Mob wants to fit in, but Teru wants to stand out. But yet, both of them are feeling really isolated due to their abilities. And Ritsu, Mob's younger brother, was also a very interesting case. For the first few episodes, it seems all he had was admiration for his big brother, and it's always going out of his way to look out for him. But then we discovered there's actually quite a bit of fear and envy in there. Ritsu and Mob are total opposites, not in the same way that uh, Mob is with Seru. Ritsu is very popular, very good in school, and very athletic, but he really wants psychic abilities. While Mob has uh, psychic abilities really easy, but it's not good at any of the other stuff. I didn't mention how it's implied that emotion is the fuel for psychic abilities. So when he started going a dark path and having some self-loathing, suddenly that sparked his ability. And that almost got him into a sort of rivalry with Mob, but that was really not going to go anywhere. Mob simply is the most powerful thing there is, and he doesn't really have much that can trickle him. Another thing about emotion, besides just being a fuel for psychic abilities, it almost seems to be a finite entity. I mean, stay with me here. In the very first shot was this really colorful, brightly amazing animated fight between what I'm assuming to be Mob and a lot of demons. And this counter was just going up and up and up to a hundred. I actually thought that was going to happen just once, but no, it actually happens four times. And each time to different effects. <laughs> So yeah, all that emotion that Mob is bottling in to contain his abilities actually adds up, and it's interesting following the counter. In fact, the show has a lot of love for those counters, not just for the percentage to Mob explosions, but also to comedic stuff like Theru's hair, Mob's stamina, and the likes. It was, yeah, I kinda liked it. Now, I mentioned how this show is at its core really a coming of age, I mean, when high school, it deals with high school stuff almost with everyone, but once Clock came to the picture, it just became a battle show. A rescue show. We gotta rescue Ritsu. And Claw is a really colorful, diverse group of characters. I loved how the variety of not just in the design but also in the powers. I just I love that. Kind of took me back to One Punch Man and the whole S rank crew. <laughs> and this is the first time you actually got a sense of danger for Mob, but at the end of the day, even they weren't really that much of a threat to him. I mean, yeah, eventually they got the upper hand, and that's where we are right now, he's unconscious, everyone's been captured. But yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's where I'm at. Next, I'm going to be doing a live reaction for the finale. So, who is that guy at the end? It can't be Reagan, can it? Seriously? I don't think it's... Could it? No, come on, no. No. It does look like him though. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, please join me for that. There you guys.